Welcome to our Landing Place Church online connection. We're so glad you're joining us today as we continue our series, Clash When People Collide. If you are encouraged by the message today, please hit the like button and share this message with someone you care about. Also, be sure to follow us online for more great content. Hey kids, there's a special experience available just for you over on our Kids Link Facebook page, so be sure to check it out. Finally, if you would like prayer or if you'd like to connect with us in any way, please click the link provided to fill out a connection card. Enjoy the message.
I want to welcome you to episode four of our series Clash, When People Collide, where we've been talking about conflict. The series is based on two basic truths. The first being this, conflict sucks the life out of us. We're surrounded by conflict. It seems like every area of life right now. And conflict robs us of time, money, energy, and opportunity. That's the bad news. But the good news is this, resolving conflict is a learned skill. With God's help, we can get better at working through the conflicts that we're in right now to be able to move forward. So, somebody's hurt you. They've done something, they've said something, they've posted something, and it's bugging you. I mean, it's keeping you awake at night. It's been going on for days, weeks, months, maybe even years. You feel like you want to address it, you need to address it, but you're really not sure how. It's so uncomfortable having a, a confrontation with someone. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? I think if we're honest, we've probably all been there. Maybe some of us are there right now. Well, last week, we, we talked about what Jesus called the first step in conflict resolution. That's, I gotta own my part. In every conflict, there's a my part. And Jesus said, hey, before you go digging the speck out of somebody else's eye, you might wanna check that log in your own eye. Today, we move on to the second step. Once we've owned our part, now Jesus gives us step two in the conflict resolution process. We find this in Matthew, Matthew 18, verses 15 through 17, where Jesus said this, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you've won that person back. But if you're unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, now take your case to the church. So, when I feel like I need to confront someone about their part of the conflict, I've already owned my part, but now it's time to go and, and talk about their part. What can we learn from Jesus' advice today? Before we lovingly confront someone, I'm gonna ask four questions. And the first question is this, is this confrontation worthy? Let's be honest, not everything rises to the level of being confrontation worthy. Jesus actually put the bar pretty high. He actually said, if another believer sins against you. So what does that mean, if another believer sins against you? Well, there's a lot of things that we get in conflict about that are really not sinful. They may be a disagreement. We may not like the way somebody does something, but they really don't rise to the level of sin. How someone votes in an election does not really rise to this level. Whether or not you love wearing masks really doesn't. Whether you embrace your child's online education or not, these are things that really don't rise to the level of sin. So how do I know? Is there a filter that I can run things through to say, oh, this is confrontation worthy, or you know what? I just need to let go of this. I would say there are four things that sort of rise to this level that we should be looking for to say, you know what? I think I need to have a conversation about this. The first is this, it dishonors God. If what the other person is doing is dishonoring to God, if it's something that God has directly prohibited and said, no, don't do this, and they're doing it, that rises to the level of a conversation. The second would be this, does it damage your relationship with that person? In other words, has something been done that has sort of split your relationship and it's bugging you? If it does, that rises to the level of needing a conversation around it. Their third would be this, is what they're doing, does it hurt others? Whether knowingly or unknowingly, sometimes we do things to hurt others and we don't even know it. But if that's the case, it may be up to us to have a conversation with that person and go, hey, you may not even realize this, but what you're doing is hurting other people. And finally, the fourth thing that sort of rises to that level of saying, yeah, this is con confrontation worthy, is does it hurt the offender? 
In other words, are they doing something that's either self-destructive or maybe it's damaging their reputation, their leadership? Is it doing something that self-inflicts harm on them? If it falls into one of these four categories, then it's probably confrontation worthy. Now, I've been on both ends of these conversations. I've been the one that people have confronted and I've been on the end of having to confront people. Earlier this year, a young lady in our congregation came up to me and goes, hey, Mark, I need to have a conversation with you. And I go, hey, that's great. We set up a time and she came in the office and I could tell just sort of by her demeanor, this is gonna be a, a crucial conversation. And she began the conversation, she goes, you know, I feel kind of weird about this because this actually happened a couple of years ago. But the truth is, I've been sort of carrying something against you for the last couple of years. You made a decision that affected my ministry and affected me personally. And I really didn't like the way it shook down. And, and I just need to have a conversation and I need to be able to talk to you about this. And so I listened to her and, and sure enough, I didn't remember a lot of the details, but indeed I had made a decision that did affect her. It did affect her ministry adversely. And after listening to her, I came to the conclusion, I didn't regret the decision. I believe it was the right decision to make. But it was very clear to me in our conversation that the way it got communicated to her or the lack of good communication on my part was really hurtful to her. Now, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I had no idea that I'd hurt her. For the last couple of years, I'm thinking everything is great between us. I'm thinking there's no problem. And she's walking around with this sort of barrier to relationship. We talked it over, 30 minutes later, we walked out of that room and our relationship was resolved. And I gotta tell you, I'm so grateful to her for coming to me and saying, hey, I need to lovingly confront you about this because in my mind, this has ruined our relationship or it's created a barrier that I wasn't even aware of but her being willing to come and confront me, now all of a sudden I was aware, I could apologize, we could make amends, and our relationship could be restored. You see, when this is done well, that's what happens. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't love confrontation. I don't love on the receiving end. I don't love being on the giving out end. Most of us kind of stink at this. What most of us do with conflict is we stuff it. We take it, we stuff it, we hide it inside of ourselves. And after a while, we just keep stuffing and stuffing and stuffing. And what happens is eventually we get filled up with conflict and it begins to seep out of us in really, really unhealthy ways. It can come out as passive aggressive behavior. It can come out in resentment where we just, we just almost loathe the other person after a while. We can't see any good in what they do. Or in the worst case scenario, we stuff it to the point where one day we just explode. And when we explode, all of this resentment, all of the things we've been storing up comes out in one time, in one conversation. And I will tell you, it's never a very productive way to resolve conflict. So the first question we ask, is this confrontation worthy? Now, the second thing we learn from Jesus' teaching, the second question that we ask is this, what's the goal of confrontation? What's my target on the wall walking into a loving confrontation? What am I hoping happens here? We could go in with some really unhealthy motives. In other words, we just wanna call them out. Hey, I'm mad at you and you hurt me, and I'm gonna hurt you, and I wanna tell you exactly what you did. We could come at this very, very aggressively, but I can almost promise you that the more aggressively we confront someone, the more likely they are to become defensive, the more likely they are to escalate the problem instead of de-escalate. We need to know that walking into a conflict and walking into a loving confrontation, our goal is to restore the relationship. Look what Jesus says. If the other person listens and confesses their part, you've won that person back. You see, Jesus' goal in confrontation is always to win, not win the argument, 
but to win the relationship, to win the person back. And that almost never happens unless we make it our primary motivation to walk into a loving confrontation with the goal of restoring that relationship. It changes our strategy. It changes our demeanor. It changes our tone. It changes everything. We start by owning our part. Hey, you know what? Here's my part. I own my part. But now I want to help you see your part in this too. And so we always want to go into these loving confrontations with the right motives. Second question we ask, what's the goal of confrontation? Goal is always to restore relationship. Now we go on to question number three. How? How do we lovingly confront someone? I want to give you three principles of conflict resolution, some how-to Lovingly confront someone in an honoring way. The first is this. We're going to go privately. Jesus said this, go privately and point out the offense. You know, in this world of social media and texts and emails, it's so easy to hide behind the comfort of a screen and a keyboard. It's so easy to just blast somebody. We type things out that we would never say to somebody's face. You know, public shaming rarely restores relationships. We want to do this right. Jesus said, look, don't confront people in public. Don't do it in a, in a meeting. Don't do it around other people. Go privately to the person and go, hey, could we sit and talk? I really want to, I really want to hash through this with you. So the first thing is go privately. The second thing is this. We want to use I statements. In confrontation, our natural tendency is sort of go into attack mode. Man, you always do this, or you never do this. And as soon as we move into attack mode and we use a lot of you statements, it tends to put people on the defensive. And when people feel like they're threatened, they do one of two things. They do fight or flight. They'll, they'll either just shut down or take off, or you back them into a corner and they will come out fighting. And the conflict gets escalated, and it never really goes where you want it to go. So instead of using you statements, we're going to use I statements. You know, I'm, I get embarrassed when you make fun of me in front of the group. That's, that's how it makes me feel. You probably don't intend that, but when you say kind of remarks like this or like that, it makes me feel this way, and, and I don't like feeling that way. Or... I find it hard to back you and to support you, to be loyal to you when I know what you're saying isn't the truth. I feel like it puts me in a really difficult situation, sort of between a rock and a hard place. Using I statements, I feel like this when this situation occurs. Typically, that'll de-escalate the conflict. Now, lastly, we want to go in with a I'm for you attitude. Hey, the reason we're having this conversation today is because I love you. I value our relationship. I'm in your corner. I genuinely care about you, and I don't want to see you hurt yourself. I don't want to see you hurt anybody else in the process. That's why I'm bringing this to your attention. You know, earlier this year, I had a conversation where I had to have a loving confrontation with somebody. They were involved in some behavior that was going to be damaging to them, to their family, and this is wasn't just somebody in our church. This was, this was a friend of mine, somebody that I really cared about. And so we had this conversation, and I began saying, hey, you know, it's come to my attention that, that you've been wrapped up in this, and is that true? And they said, yeah, actually, it really is true. And I said, you know, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to come down on you. I'm not here to belittle you or to call you out. I'm just saying, man, as somebody who loves you, I know that this behavior is going to take you somewhere you don't want to go. It's going to take your family somewhere that you don't want to go. And I love you too much not to have a conversation about it. I'm in your corner. I'm for you. And you know, he received that really well, really well, made the changes he needed to make. I believe that some relationships were restored because I was able to come at it from a I'm for you standpoint. Okay? Okay. So how do we lovingly confront? We go privately, we use I statements, we go with an I'm for you attitude. 
one last question we want to consider, and that's this. What if it doesn't work? No matter how well we work Jesus' process, some people are just not going to be in the space where they receive it well. They just don't see their behavior as being part of the problem. What do we do then? Well, guess what? Jesus knew ahead of time that some people weren't going to receive it well. So he said this, if you're unsuccessful, in other words, if it doesn't work, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. You know, it's hard to be objective when we're emotionally involved in the argument. Sometimes it really helps to have some, uh, an objective third party. Somebody who really doesn't have a dog in this particular fight, but somebody who loves both parties. And somebody who can listen and go, you know, that makes sense or that doesn't make sense. And Jesus said, look, if it doesn't work one-on-one, go ahead, bring some other people in it. Get that objective third voice in there. But what if even that doesn't work? Jesus goes, okay, there's one last ditch effort you have. I want to remind you the beginning of this verse. It says, if a believer sins against you. Okay, so all of this conflict resolution right now that we've been talking about has been for people who follow Jesus. And Jesus goes, look, if going privately didn't work and then taking along some other people, an objective third party didn't work, now if this person still refuses to listen, go ahead and take your case to the church. Now, too often people want to skip steps one and two. I go to the person, I bring along some witnesses. They want to skip right to this and go, hey, Mark, you need to talk to so-and-so. Oh, man, you, did you see what they said about me? Did you see what they did? Did you see what they posted? You need to go talk to them. And I go, have you gone and talked to them? Because until you've done that, I'm not going to get involved. You know what I found? About 99% of conflicts resolve themselves when we do this in the order that Jesus gave us. When we go privately to someone, we own our part first, and then we have a loving confrontation. If that doesn't work, we we take along a couple other wise people with us to help mitigate the issue. And then if it doesn't work, you know what? We're happy to get involved. We're happy to sit down and, and work through the next steps. So what have we learned today? We've learned that not everything is confrontation worthy. There's some things we just need to let go of. But those things that rise to the level of sin, those things really benefit from having a sit-down conversation with. We've learned that we're going to sit down with that person and we're going to sit down with them privately. We're going to use I statements. We're going to be a I'm for you attitude. And our goal is going to be to restore the relationship, not win the argument. I believe that when we apply the principles that Jesus gave us, we're going to find that we can decrease the amount of conflict we have in our lives, that we can restore some relationships that have been broken. I want you to imagine with me for just a minute, if you will, what would happen if every single person at Landing Place Church decided that they were going to go after a conflict they're in right now using Jesus' principles. I believe if we did that, we would model to a world that is so embroiled in conflict right now that there's a better way to live life, that there's a better way to resolve conflict. And I believe it would not only make our lives better, but it would make everybody's life around us better. So I would ask you today, if there's a conflict you're in right now, Would you just consider, just consider what Jesus said. Just consider resolving that conflict his way. I want to close this up, this episode, in prayer, asking God for his help to do what we find to be very difficult. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for the clarity of the words that Jesus gave us. And God, I know firsthand how hard this is how hard it is to to work up the courage to to sit down and be on the the giving end of this conversation. I also know how difficult it is to be on the receiving end of this conversation. But God, I believe that if we would approach conflicts your way 
And if we follow the instructions that Jesus gave us, I believe that we can reduce the conflict, the hostility, the violence that's going on in our world right now. And maybe even more important than resolving our conflict, maybe we can model to a lost and hurt and broken world there's a better way to do life. So God, will you help us right now? Will you help us to lovingly confront when it's appropriate? We love you and we thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. One of the great things we get to do here at Landing Place Church is partner with organizations around the world to help people when they've encountered some of the worst times of their life. In Central America, over the last two weeks, they've been hit with not one, but two major hurricanes. This week alone, uh, the nation of Honduras is receiving 30 inches of rain in a 24-hour period. And the challenge with this sort of mountainous where houses are built on mud and slopes is when it rains that much, houses just begin to collapse from the top of the mountain all the way down. And there's a loss of life and a loss of possessions. And it's just a terrible situation. At Landing Place, we partner with an organization in the capital city of Honduras, uh, Tegucigalpa. And the organization is World Gospel Outreach. It's a place where we've sent teams for the last 12 years uh, to partner with medical brigades and meeting the needs of this impoverished nation. Thanks to your ongoing giving, week in and week out, we were able to send $2,500 to what they call WGO Cares. And I want to show you just a little bit of video to show you what's going on and how your investment in the kingdom of God is making a difference on the ground in Honduras. Let's watch this. Hello, everybody. We are here in Las Prisas in a school that we have done medical brigade before. I'm here with Lisette. She's one of our pharmacies. She is with her church giving food away. As you can see here, she is. Uh, sh uh, she has saw the need, and everybody like endurance. We are serving the Lord like one body in Christ. So I'm gonna show you a little bit what is going on in this shelter. So you can see this is the shelter where the people is actually living. This is the condition the people is right now. As you can see, there's a lot of need of medicine. There's a lot of need of, of food. As you can see, people not even have a place where to sleep. So this is how the condition of the people in our country. If you are new to the faith and would like to know what's next for you as a Jesus follower, or if you would like prayer, please click our connection card link. If you would like to live generously, you can give online by clicking the generosity link. Thank you for partnering with us to invest in what God cares about most, people. If you would like to further explore today's message, we would love for you to click on the link for the discussion page where you will find scriptures and questions designed to help you discover more about living as a follower of Jesus Christ. Join us next week for another great message. Have a great day.